Christ, how? How do you narrow down all the phenomenal wrestlers there have been over the past century plus into a bite-sized top 10 list without leaving someone out and committing the greatest crime in the history of YouTube? Hashtag dislike, hashtag unsubscribe, hashtag capital letters fury. Well, I'll do my best. And if you have any serious complaints about my top 10 list, do please send those concerns to at Jack underscore the jobber on Twitter. Honorable mentions, Ric Flair, Randy Savage, Hulk Hogan, I 100% acknowledge that these men are hugely important in the history of wrestling, both in-ring work and drawing power, but putting these men on my list would be as disingenuous as putting Bruno San Martino. I just didn't experience their work as it was ruling and shaping the industry and re-watching their matches now with modern sensibilities. It's just not as special. Sorry. I'm Adam from WhatCulture.com and here are my 10 greatest wrestlers of all time. Number 10, Daniel Bryan. The GOAT may not be the greatest of all time because he had his top years taken away from him by a culmination of injuries, but even if Daniel Bryan never steps back into the ring, he's done more than enough to secure his status as one of the greatest ever. His work in Ring of Honor is superb. He's one of the best technical wrestlers to have ever walked the earth, so much so that Dave Meltzer named the Observer's Best Technical Wrestler Award after him. But also, he's one of the most likable wrestlers of all time and that matters. I was more invested in Daniel Bryan's journey to WrestleMania 30 than any story in over a decade. I was personally f***ing insulted when he wasn't in the Rumble that year and his monster video package might just be my favourite of all time. He cultivates that personal investment in everything he does and that's so rare and the mark of a truly great wrestler despite losing what could have been phenomenal years of work. Number nine, Brock Lesnar. This shouldn't really be a surprise to anyone who's ever heard me talking about Brock Lesnar in a list video. I am fascinated by him in the same way that astronomers are fascinated by black holes. They respect them, want to understand how they work, but don't want to interview one because Jesus goddamn Christ. For the last four years, Brock Lesnar has been the last great special attraction in wrestling. In an era where so many superstars are overexposed, he creates palpable excitement just by showing up. Love him or hate him, he's still the most legitimate fighter on the roster, and simply put, he generates combat intensity in a way that's comparable only to bears and killer whales. Also, you know, his two-year run the Ruthless Aggression era was amazing. Number eight, The Rock. There's a reason why Dwayne The Rock Johnson is the highest paid movie star in the world right now, and that is charisma. He's probably more charismatic than me, and that is f***ing saying something. Sam, animate something that emphasizes how that is f***ing saying something. I will wait. Cool. Go back and watch literally any of The Rock's promos from 1998 to 2003. Every single one is dynamite and cemented him as one of the best heels, then best faces, then best heels, then best faces of all time. And for as much as people want to shit on his wrestling ability, and we've done it ourselves in the past, he was good in the ring. Crisp, explosive, always connected, always listening to the fans. Held the guy got over a standing elbow drop as a championship winning move. That is the kind of showmanship the industry was built on. Number seven, AJ Styles. Being one of the greatest wrestlers alive and working today has to count for something, and there can be no doubt that if he continues his current trajectory, then when I do this list again in 10 years time, AJ Styles will be in the top five, top three, maybe even the top one. I straight up refuse to use the P word in this entry to describe him because that's been done enough, but he is very, 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 very good. Very good. Seriously though, even discounting his amazing work in New Japan, his matches at Wrestle Kingdom 9 and 10 are near peerless. Every single pay-per-view WWE have aired this year, he has been involved in either the best or second best match of the night. No matter who he works with, his selling, athleticism and storytelling have elevated them and he's been this good for over a damn decade. Number six, Eddie Guerrero. Eddie Guerrero was so good 
for so long, but like Daniel Bryan, his career was brought to an abrupt end before his best years were over. A mere year and a half after winning the WWE Championship, Eddie Guerrero was dead. Dying in your prime tends to canonize you, but Eddie deserves to be regarded as a wrestling deity. Everywhere he's been, he's been regarded as one of the best in-ring workers in the world. In AAA and CMLL in native Mexico, winning best as Super Juniors in New Japan, wowing fans in ECW, creating Cruiserweight Magic in WCW, before finally winning the big one, the WWE Championship in 2004 after an astonishing 17 year career. And he's not just regarded for his athleticism, his lie, cheat and steal gimmick is one of the best and most endearing WWE ever did. He's the industry's one true puppy. Number five, The Undertaker. I mean, he turned up to work, they gave him this costume, and he got over. If he wasn't one of the best big guys to ever wrestle in a ring, the hokey gimmick of an undead voodoo priest undertaker demon thing would have fallen on its ass, but he had the intensity to pull it off while somehow retaining his integrity 100%. A huge part of what makes a wrestler great is their in-ring skill, no doubt, but equally huge is character work, and no one, no one on this list did better character work than The Undertaker. He turned a spooky wooky gimmick into gold, made a limp biscuit biker persona respectable, and reinvented himself with near constant success. He even made this goddamn Phantom of the Opera face mask work. He's a f***ing genius of stage presence and has 25 years of bizarre but somehow iconic work under his belt. Number four, Bret Hart. The fourth best there is, the fourth best there was, and the fourth best there ever will be. Bret Hart was a talent that literally defined a generation. Hart was the man to carry the company from the muscle-bound Adonises of the 1980s into a generation focused on intense and athletic work rate and, you know, not steroids. Well, him and another guy we'll be getting to later. The early 90s weren't the best years for the WWF in terms of the quality of wrestling, but rewatch Hart's matches and, God damn it, they're still amazing. His matches with Piper, perfect. Owen Hart, British Bulldog, Austin are f***ing treasures and it seemed like he could work with anyone. Hell, he could probably drag a compelling WWF Championship match out of Head Shrinker Fatu. I know that because he actually did it on Raw in 1993. In terms of wrestlers who made everyone who stepped into the ring with them look like a million bucks, there can be absolutely none better than the Hitman. Number three, Steve Austin. There's a reason that when I did a list of top 10 pops of all time, most of them started with the sound of shattering glass. Austin was a legitimate phenomenon. Austin 316 is still the best merch the company ever did. Those t-shirts were pissing everywhere, and he's one of, if not the greatest draw in history. In business terms, there hasn't been a wrestler more important than Steve Austin, not even Hulk Hogan. In his all too brief run at the top, Austin made more money combined for the company than Hogan's extended tenure. That is bananas and as crass as it sounds how much money you make is a huge part of how great you are as a wrestler because it represents investment investment from the fans and who the f wasn't invested in Stone Cold Steve Austin. He was an electric brawler, he was superb on the mic, he had won the best finishes of all time, he was in the best feud of all time. There is so much about him that is simply unmatched anywhere else. Only subjective favoritism prevents him from being the greatest of all time. Number two, Shawn Michaels. The heartbreak kid has a reputation for being one of the most difficult men in the history of the business. Thing is, he's also one of the absolute very best to ever lace his boots. The greatest show off in the history of wrestling, sorry Dolph, everything about Michaels was entertaining, from his acrobatic moveset to his early career sort of quasi-sex offender character, all the way to his 2002-2010 run, which is one of the best runs of any wrestler ever. Seriously, those goddamn mania matches Michaels put on in those eight years. The Undertaker matches, his match with Jericho, Angle, the triple threat at 20. He still probably got seen as best mania match. Even the street fight with Vince was stellar, and he managed to be one of the best parts of the end of an era Hell in a Cell match, and he didn't even f***ing wrestle. He just never got anything wrong. From jaw-dropping moment to jaw-dropping moment, he was poetry in motion. And number one, Kurt Angle. He's the best. My fondness for Kurt Angle comes from a few places. First of all, he won the WWF Championship on the first pay-per-view I ever stayed up to watch, No Mercy 2000. He was the first heel champion that I ever got to experience firsthand. But more than that, his matches are just so good. His stuff with Shane, Benoit, Edge, Guerrero, Michaels, Mysterio, Lesnar, Undertaker, Austin. Don't get me wrong, he did some fantastic stuff in TNA as well, but just by itself, his WWE body of work is the best there's ever been, in my opinion. 
Also, and again, this is just another personal thing, he's the funniest wrestler that's ever existed. Okay, right now. Okay, listen, listen to me, listen. I know, The Rock, Austin, Regal, Jericho, Martin Kirby are all strong contenders for that crown, but nothing, nothing has reduced me to such a wreck as when Kurt Angle dressed as Shawn Michaels and sang, I'm just a sexy Kurt, I'll make your ankle hurt. Look at his tiny cowboy hat. Look at his face after kissing his gold medals that have been down Chris Benoit's pants. Watch that promo where he refuses to come down to the ring until the crowd stop chanting, you suck at him. I love him. He's the best. It's true. It's f***ing true. And that's our list. Did we miss any out? Of course we did. Tell us all about it in the comments and don't forget to like, share and subscribe and you can follow me on Twitter here. I'm Adam from whatculture.com and I'll see you soon.